Okay. Well, let's get started. More people may filter. everyone to our latest GeoTalk webinar series. Uh, my internet isn't great, so I'll keep my portion very brief. <laughs> uh, I'd like to introduce our speaker today. His name is Brad Ashley, and he's the president of the Alberta Society of Surveying and Mapping Technologies. Uh, I know Brad, I think we go quite back quite a ways, uh, and he is the current president of the ASSMT, and the ASSMT is celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. Congratulations, Brad. That's a huge achievement. Um, so this society provides accreditation for qualified individuals in surveying, mapping, and other geomatics related occupations. Brad is also the product manager at Solve 3D in Calgary, which is a company that specializes in geospatial applications for LiDAR optimization and web streaming. And he has promised to come back and give a talk on that at some time in the future. So we look forward to that too. But today, Brad will be talking about um, the Society's geospatial certifications over the 50 years. And without further ado, I will pass the puck to Brad to share his screen. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Can you hear me? Wonderful. Yes. Great. Thank All you right. very much. Thanks, Candice. Uh, yeah. So this is our, uh, I'm Brad Ashley. I'm going to do a quick introduction in a second. Uh, I'll go through uh, the presentation here. I'll try and keep it to the, the amount of time that Candice has given me. Um, but as we go, I'll try and give some color on what our society does, uh, you know, what we've done through the years, why we think certification is critical, uh, and a little bit specifically on why we think um, having a society that specifically uh, does geomatics certifications versus uh, every, everybody, um, why, why we think that's important. So I will get you through this presentation. So quick agenda, gonna cover, like I just mentioned, all the different uh, certification sides, proposed changes. Uh, we have gone to our membership and we have some, some ideas on where we're headed. And then I'll leave some time for questions as well. As Candace quickly uh, mentioned, my name's Brad Ashley. Uh, I am a CST, which is a certified surveying technician, as well as a certified engineering technician or CET. And again, I'll, I'll speak about why we have both designations here. Uh, I am the product manager at Salt uh, or Salt 3D in Calgary, and again, like Candice mentioned, I'll, I'll uh, hope to come back and speak to you about our applications, uh, maybe later in the year or early 2021. I am the president of the ASS ASSMT. Uh, we're a, a society that maybe you haven't previously heard of, so that's why uh, I thought maybe we should have a quick talk and. Um, offer the opportunity for folks in Nova Scotia to hear of us. I'm also the past president of the Alberta Geomatics Group or the AGG, uh, which has been around a long time as well. Uh, so maybe some folks have heard of that, that group. And I am a COGS graduate uh, going to, to COGS uh, for the two year surveying program. Uh, a number of years ago, as you can tell from the photo, uh, I, I'm, I'm no longer a, a, a spring chicken. Uh, so, who is the ASSMT? Again, uh, it's our 50th year, so we were incorporated back in 1970, uh, and really our whole purpose is the accreditation of our individuals or our members, um, specifically in the fields of geospatial. Uh, so, whether they're surveying and mapping, uh, we'll, I'll get into the different types of certification, um, but really anyone who does work in the, in the geospatial realm. Our bylaws speak to allowing members from Alberta as well as the territories. And so if, if you're someone who uh, you know, regularly travels and works in Alberta, um, we might be of interest. Otherwise, I, I just thought maybe there'd be some, uh, maybe some commonality between our two groups and some interest in, in talking further uh, and, and speaking to why, why our members become members or become certified uh, uh, technologists. 
So a bit about our mission. Uh, again, we do certification and I'm gonna spend most of my time on that. Uh, but in addition to that, we do promotion of the industry. So things like uh, GIS days, uh, events to promote what geomatics is uh, throughout Alberta. We do, um, we do participate in a few different uh, industry events uh, and, and try to get out to as many talks as we can do. As well, we try and get into high schools to speak about why geomatics is a, uh, a great way of going uh, for education when folks leave high school. And that's been really successful uh, over the last few years. We've had probably well over a thousand students come to our events and speak to us about why getting into geomatics is uh, a great education path. On the education of our members, that's another component that we do. Uh, so we provide learning opportunities, whether they be you know, webinars like this one uh, or whether they're in-person events when COVID-19 isn't preventing those. Uh, we are actually really far down the path of, of having a uh, a large event in May. Uh, it was going to be a joint event with a few other associations on technology and innovation. Of course, it had to be canceled uh, or postponed. So, so we'll look to do that maybe in 2021 when hopefully uh, in-person events get back to normal. In addition, we, we do three bursaries at our three local colleges, those being Nate Sate and Lethbridge College uh, for students enrolled in the geomatics programs. Uh, and we, we make sure that those students uh, get the opportunity to get bursaries every year. So our certification process is pretty uh, standard, but I thought I'd walk you through it. We start out with members applying, so anyone can apply. Uh, there's no uh, real limit. Again, uh, our bylaws do speak to the fact that we're looking for folks who have experience or are experiencing work in Alberta and the territories. Um, but essentially anyone can apply for our, our certification. There, uh, as part of the application, you have to provide proof of education, experience and references. So there's a, a form for all of that, uh, but, but we go through and ensure that, uh, that we have all the information that we need. Next, it goes to a panel of examiners uh, and that group assesses all of the information. And for folks like myself who went to the colleges outside of Alberta, um, they go through and equate our education against uh, the requirements of the Alberta curriculum. So I remember when I applied, you know, a decade or more ago to being a member of the ASSMT, I had to go back and find all my transcripts um, and, and find all my stuff from COGS that showed what my, my classes were uh, so that they could go through and de determine whether I had the appropriate uh, education. And I think that's, you know, something important to know. Uh, oftentimes you get those uh, class syllabuses at the beginning of the year and you think, you know, what am I ever going to need this for? Uh, well, actually you do need them. Uh, and in times like certification processes uh, is, is when you're trying to uh, find those is a good time to, to remember to save those and maybe save them someplace that you can access them later. After the panel of examiners reviews and ensures that the member or the uh, applicant is uh, of the right education, it goes to a certification board. And that board is made up of uh, members of our society as well as members of the Alberta Land Surveying Association. Uh, and that group or that certification board then determines what level of certification that member uh, should get. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the different levels and as well uh, what sort of distinction they should get, whether they're um, you know, cadastral, uh, civil, or, or other. Finally, once the certification board makes a recommendation, our actual council of our society uh, goes and does a motion to propose that that member become an actual member of our, of our society. So there are a number of different membership levels. We have our student members, which are available to any student um, as long as they're in a geomatics program or geospatial program, and that is free of charge. We have associate members, so those maybe that aren't, uh, you know, working currently in the field, um, but want to stay connected, we do have that option. Then we have what's called a technician in training, which allows someone who doesn't have the level of academic requirement or the level of employment experience to um, become a certified member. 
they can become a technician in training until the time that they have those uh, required academics or required uh, education experiences uh, and then do the, the full certification. And then we have our final uh, certification memberships, which include uh, technicians and senior technicians. And we give that a denotion of CTEC. And we have our technologists and senior technologists, which get the CST or Certified Surveying Technologist, uh, which is uh, what I had at the end of my um, name in the introduction slide. So beyond the different levels of membership, we also break those certified members down based on their experiences. So we have uh, certification categories, including cadastral survey. So those folks who have experience and can have references related to uh, property delineation, or maybe they've done subdivision work. Um, so on the cadastral side, those who've worked in the civil survey side, so you know infrastructure projects, uh, groundworks, et cetera. Then we have our drafting and GIS side for, for the office sort of certification level. This is actually the certification that I have, um, being a, a drafting manager for a long time and working in the GIS realm. Uh, this is where uh, most of my experiences have been. And then we also have photogrammetry and remote sensing. And the reason uh, that we break these up is because as you go through the certification process, the experiences and references that would be required are different. So you can't expect that someone that, you know, uh, is currently a drone pilot uh, would be able to maybe do cadastral uh, delineation or property boundary uh, reestablishment. Whereas, you know, vice versa, you wouldn't expect that someone um, that does a lot of property corners uh, or infrastructure projects, maybe they don't know enough about GIS or photogrammetry to get those designations. So we think it's really important to have each. Uh, and we do oftentimes have members who have multiple certification categories. So they might be a cadastral survey uh, primary and then drafting in GIS secondary or, or some other mix of that. So why us? Um, so as I, I kind of mentioned off the beginning in the introductory slide, I have my CST, I also have my CET. And so I know that many uh, provinces in the country have a CET designation or a certified engineering technologist or technician designation. Um, but we feel that it's important that our industry continue to have certifications specific to the geospatial world. Uh, so Although many of our members might get that CET designation in addition to ours, it's more focused on the engineering and less focused on the surveying and mapping side of things. So again, our certification process takes you through ensuring that, you know, if you're going to become a, a cadastral certified member, that you understand uh, reestablishment of property uh, and that you're doing that on a technical level, working for a land surveying firm. Uh, if you're doing photogrammetry and remote sensing, that you understand the principles and requirements of that, and you're working for a firm or, or yourself uh, doing that type of, of work. Uh, our members are really critical uh, to each other. So we do offer our member list on our website, and so folks can look and see if, uh, if people other people are members. But through our careers, we often are looking for a place to turn for advice. And our, we find that our members and ourselves often go back to the, the other certified folks uh, to ask for advice. I know myself, uh, you know, working on uh, building projects in the past uh, from a drafting perspective, I've reached out to other members to ask, you know, have you had this similar problem or, or issue? Have you worked on something similar? Uh, and, you know, most times others have had similar experiences and are able to provide those that advice. Also, by sticking with the geospatial side, we can expand our profession and include members from across our industry. So again, we're not just designated as a CET uh, or something that's specific to the engineering realm, but we allow our profession uh, to, to stand uh, and have our, our uh, categories that represent those from a, a different backgrounds throughout the geospatial industry. 
So we have some proposed changes uh, that we were looking to make. Uh, we've gone to our our membership to make sure that people are happy with these and we, we've seen that they are. So right now uh, for the last 50 years we've been certifying survey technologists uh, as our designation CST and so we're looking to probably change that to a certified spatial technologist uh, so that the S stands for spatial and uh, is more inclusive for those members who uh, might come from the GIS and drafting side or from the remote sensing and photogrammetry side. So that's something that, uh, that we're currently working on. Also, we're looking to potentially change our name uh, since you know, it's, it's a real mouthful to say the Alberta Society of Surveying and Mapping Technologists every time. Uh, and ASSMT, uh, while it's a, you know, nice and short, um, it doesn't really mean a whole lot to most folks. So we are uh, looking to potentially change your name. You might even consider changing from a society to an association uh, and, you know, even consider getting rid of the, the term Alberta uh, if we look to partner with other associations uh, to increase this certification across the country. Uh, that is a, a concept to potentially work with groups like GANs and others uh, to help get certification in the geospatial uh, industry across the country. Um, we have been working on a, uh, a more advanced membership level that would uh, allow our members to do some functions of a land surveyor um, or that fall under the Land Surveying Act. And so uh, we've been working with the Alberta Land Surveying Association to uh, develop that, what it would look like and what those might, might be, which, which pieces of those uh, jobs that our members could actually uh, do. So a little bit about why certifications uh, critical so by having members be certified with us, it obviously increases our capability of doing industry support uh, and hopefully get our industry more recognized. Um, hopefully, you know, eventually people won't have to try and come up with analogies of what we do as geospatial professionals um, and, and just being able to say geomatics is enough. Uh, we offer additional employment opportunities and networking. So again, it's difficult with the, uh, with the COVID lockdown, but we have hosted a, a social networking online event where people could just talk and, and see how things are going. Um, as well, uh, we, we on our website allow for people to post their jobs. Uh, hopefully as part of the industry recognition side, we can increase corporate profiles of our members and, and their companies. And then the end goal is that our members would see higher salaries and education bursaries. Uh, specifically on the higher salary side of things, uh, we have had uh, member associations that have come back and they've um, built their job descriptions around being a member of the ASSMT. So for example, maybe to go from drafter one to drafter two or, or some sort of um, advancement in your career within a company, maybe part of that requires that you become a member of our society um, or a, a member of some level of our society. Uh, and we have seen that in the past. We also have had a number of land surveying associations here or our land surveying companies here uh, sign on saying that they'll only hire uh, new hires that do have the CST designation for geospatial jobs. And that's a really great way of, of ensuring that our certification has purpose, um, but also ensure that only uh, certified and, and well-educated folks uh, take those jobs. Uh, that's essentially my presentation. I'll quickly pop up the, the connect with us. We have a website uh, as well. We have our Twitter and our LinkedIn pages. Uh, so you can check those out if you'd like to. And then I'm happy to answer any questions uh, or you know, hopefully give you some color on anything else that you might uh, find uh, interesting. And then my email address and the email address of our society is there uh, at the bottom as well. That was terrific. Thanks for that. Um, anyone have any questions in the meantime while he's bringing up the website? All 
I, I have a question. Sure. Do you know how many uh, members you have as of right now? Yeah. Uh, so our membership doesn't typically change much year to year uh, because people go through the work of um, getting certified. And so right now we sit about uh, 300 members in the certified side and probably another 50 in the associate slash student category. And then from within that, uh, it's an interesting um, percentage, probably almost 90% uh, fall within the surveying or civil cadastral or, or civil designations. Uh, and probably 10 to 15% are the drafting GIS and remote sensing. So we're really heavy currently on the surveying side of things. Um, and uh, we'll hopefully by changing our designation from certified surveying technologist to certified spatial, um, more of those folks in the GIS and photogrammetry side of things uh, might find us a, a great home. Yeah, right. That's still, that's quite a few. That's a really good membership base. Yeah. Um, how long does it generally take to go through the certification? Yeah, so if you if you have your uh, documents in place, you know, you have a copy of a transcript or you can contact your college and get those uh, and you have the, the various um, references and such in place. Um, it probably takes between four and six months uh, once you've applied and gone through the panel, uh, gone through the certification board and then back to uh, the association. Uh, you know, it, it probably could go faster, but uh, all of those different roles that I mentioned are 100% volunteer. Uh, and as I'm sure you guys, I don't have to tell you, um, volunteer hours are always, uh, you know, the hardest to ask for. So um, it does, it does typically take that four to six months. I uh, see Dave is, is sending some questions in uh, through the chat as well. And no, we don't have any dealings with the Association of Nova Scotia Land Surveyors. Uh, again, we're completely Alberta based. Um, but what we would hope to be able to, uh, to promote is the fact that, you know, in Alberta, our association certifications are seen as, as something important from the, the Land Surveying Association here. Uh, and that any, you know, growth or, or um, possible promotion of certification in, in a place like Nova Scotia, um, that you guys could promote that through your land surveyor association and show us as sort of an example of what's worked. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's very interesting. I'm really uh, shocked, I guess, that you have so many people that are surveyors as opposed to the remote sensing and GIS side. Mm. I almost would have expected it to be, to be the other way around, <laughs> but yeah. I we, suppose we also, the sur surveying part of it has been around for a lot longer than the say remote sensing has, so. Yeah, and, and because we are promoted, I mean, we, all, we always get to have an option of putting a, um, an article in the in the land surveying quarterly magazine here um, we often get a chance to speak at their AGM uh, and attend we're, we're very close-knit um, our members can sit on committees for the land surveying association uh, we also have one of the oftentimes past president of the association of land surveyors uh, sit on our board of directors uh, so we have liaisons back and forth and I think that's a critical piece of, of making sure that um, that we continue to be, you know, a, a healthy organization. That's great. Thanks. Okay, so this is your website. Yeah, we have a, uh, you know, all of the the various uh, information about who we are, what some of our committees are. Again, this is where you can see where all of our who all of our members are. Uh, and oftentimes, you know, em employers will go there to make sure that an employee who says they have designation does. Um, this is how you can join and go through the certification process and what qualifications are required. Uh, we have links out to all the different education options. Uh, and then we have, when we have events and news, we post them here as well. 
uh, and then links and contacts and login. Uh, our members can actually pay their annual fees through the website. And so they can log in here. Uh, they'll then be able to see uh, some additional options up here for doing things like paying their membership fees, uh, having access to um, you know, the board of directors, notes, uh, bylaws, et cetera. We also have our news feed uh, from our tweets. So as people tweet us, um, that does show up here on the news feed. And we also follow a number of associations and organizations. I'll have to see whether we follow GANs. And, and if not, we should definitely uh, get you on here as well. So that as you have news, our members can see uh, what's going on if they're not um, maybe tech savvy and not using uh, Twitter themselves. This is a great way for them to be able to see what's going on in the industries. Definitely. And, and vice versa, we will make sure that we're following ASSMT and uh, be sharing our messages throughout. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you have to be a resident of Alberta to be part of your society? You do not. Uh, it's just we look for your your uh, your experience to have been in Alberta or the territory. So again, if you're, you're doing work here, um, but you don't live here, uh, you definitely could apply. Um, that is one of the reasons that we're looking at uh, potentially changing some of our bylaws and, and roles is to try and expand that. Um, but at the same time, we want to work with existing organizations such as yourselves, um, as opposed to just becoming, you know, coming in and saying this is how we want to do it. Uh, so if, if, you know, if GANs in the future is looking for some sort of maybe looking at a certification, uh, we'd be happy to talk talk to you and, and figure out how that could work. Yes, I think it warrants a chat in the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is something we have tossed around. So we'll have to chat more about that for sure. Yeah, this is just a great way of uh, getting some information out to your members uh, on, yeah. on why we feel it's important. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I see there's a question in the chat. Oh. Uh, accreditations are provided by professionals who volunteer their time for the process. Uh, yeah, there is no exam. Uh, so it is fully done based on education, transcripts, uh, and references. So uh, every applicant does have to provide uh, references to uh, from their employers or from someone that they've worked for before, uh, saying that they've done this type of work and that they you know did it for X number of years. Uh, to ensure that the certification level uh, matches. Terrific. Thanks for that great question, Kaya. Okay, does anyone else have any more questions for, for Brad? No. Oh, Wenji has a question. Uh, he says, hi, Brad, great speech. As a student, I am wondering, do you guys have any regular events holding with local educational institutes? Um, we haven't in the past. Uh, as a certification board, we really try to focus on the certification side of things. Um, but that's something that we were, were in the, you know, in hopes of trying to do more of. Um, yeah. I know GANS does go out to uh, COGS as I was a student there and, and remember them coming out. So um, we do hope to start doing that locally here as well. Mm, yes, we are also trying to get into more of the local universities. Like SMU has a pretty big geography department and Dalhousie as well. So sure. that's one of our areas of improvement as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Again, Great. volunteer hours are always the hardest. Yes, yes, they are. There's only so much you can do. So little time, so few people. Mm -hmm. Great. Anyone else have any questions? No. Oh, okay. Well, if everyone could unmute themselves for a moment and give Brad a round of applause, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much for your for your talk, Brad. It's much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, right, and I'm going to kick you off and share my screen for a moment um, to wrap up. 
Okay. All right. There we go. Okay, so I want to let everyone know that in two weeks time on Thursday, September 3rd, we have James Donaldson from Wingtra uh, is going to talk about their drone called Wingtra. It's a vertical takeoff and landing fixed wing aircraft drone. So it's very interesting. I've I looked into it for my own company and uh, I can't wait to learn a little bit more about it because there's not a lot of fixed wings that have a vertical takeoff like a drone. So if you're interested, please uh, stay tuned. And I didn't put it on here, but our annual general meeting will be the next uh, bi-weekly Thursday on September 17th at uh, two o'clock. So if anyone's interested in attending that, it will also be virtual via Zoom. So I encourage you to attend and check out our website and social media channels for all of the latest updates. I want to thank you all for attending. And um, just a reminder, you can check our YouTube channel for any of the, the presentations in the past that you may have missed. All right. Great. Well, thank you very much, Brad. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you for attending. We'll see you next week. Thank you very much, Brad. It's much appreciated. You are welcome. Thanks. Take care and we'll talk soon. Yep. Bye. <laughs> Bye now.